are going to do a nib demonstration with several nibs, including the um, Kuratake Seiji, a Tachikawa G nib, a mapping nib, a tank nib, um, a B nib, and a crow quill to sort of um, help you guys figure out which nibs might be right for you this Inktober. So we're going to go ahead and start with one of my are dry we're going to have to go back in later on with some white gouache and a brush to correct this area over there um, and I recommend you wait until the end to make your corrections the only problem really with the G nib um, is if you want to do wider line art you're gonna run out of ink really quickly but the G nib, the Chachikawa G nib, definitely has a lot of flex and a lot of bounce. So if you enjoy bouncy, dynamic, uh, cartoony inking, the G nib might be. And I have a bit of a problem area over here where it's still kind of wet. So, I mean, that's pretty typical with nibs that you're going to have to take a number of breaks. because they do take a while to dry. So I'm going to let that ink dry and I'll be back. And you see how much I'm rotating the page? Um, that's because regardless of what kind of nib you're inking with, you want to ink, pull your, your nib towards you. You never want to push it away. Hang on, my cat is getting into something. So if you haven't had a chance to play with a G nib yet, I highly recommend it. I find them very easy to ink with. They are not as prone to tearing the paper. You can get a lot of variation in line weight with them. Definitely a favorite of mine. Sort of um, a really good introduction. And if you're wondering where you can find these, um, I'll try to put links in the annotations and links in the description. But I'll probably most definitely put the links in the annotations. So just keep an eye on... I think you guys know the drill. I gotta let this dry. And also, um, if you're getting into inking, I really recommend you go ahead and you make the slight investment of a nice nib holder. While this dries, I'll go ahead and show you guys what I have. So this is my favorite. This is a Tachikawa nib holder. It used to have a cap that went over so you could leave your nibs in your nib holder and they wouldn't get wrecked. As you can see, it looks like it's seen better days. It's because it's seen a lot of use. Next, I actually also really like the Kuratake nib holder. As you can see, they look pretty similar. Um, the Kuratake nib holder is a little bit smaller. Both of these have a cushioned grip, so if you're heavy handed or you tend to tightly grip your uh, inking utensils, either one of these would be a great choice. Um, Next up is the Koenor nib holder with the quart grip. This is all right, but it's honestly not as comfortable as these. You might have a better chance of finding one of these in a brick and mortar store, however. Now, this has that sort of metal ring 
that holds your nib in place and it can cause rust. See all the rust on this? So I'm gonna have to clean that out. These, um, the Kuratake and the Tachikawa both have uh, plastic rings in them and can hold either curl quills or regular size nibs. Next up, for most of us, are these plastic nib holders. Let me grab a nib to demonstrate with. We'll just pick some random spoon nib. And you just slip your nib in there. These are all right. These are what most kits come with. They have um, a slight indention here. They're moderately comfortable, but if you're going to be inking for long periods of time, they can hurt your hand. Next up is, um, I think this is a speedball nib holder, and uh, it has that sort of metal bit that the Kohenor had, the ones that can be prone to rusting. I just really don't use this much at all. Lastly are the, um, wait, I might, I have an oblique holder somewhere. I never use it because I, I don't do a lot of hand lettering, so. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about crow quill holders, and there's a few kinds. This is a Tachikawa crow quill holder, and the way this works is, um, it can also work for manga tanks. I don't think I have any free-floating crows. Might, let's see. Well, we're gonna have to demonstrate with a tank. So this is a tank nib. Tank nibs are very similar to crow quill nibs. They are itty bitty except, come on, focus. There we go. It's got this little reservoir on it so it can hold a lot of ink. And the way this sort of holder works is you just slip your nib on top of it. And then I mean, you can also use your tanks with these sort of, the Tachikawa and the Kuratake holders because they have this itty bitty little ring on the inside. So you can just go ahead and slip your crow quill or your tank on that. So really, I recommend you get one of these two because they're going to be the most versatile, versatile and they're gonna be the most comfortable for your hands. You can also use, not this one I guess, um, crow quill or crow um, nibs and we're going to talk about that in a while. Most of them are not removable from the little plastic holder. Now for super fine lines, a Tachikawa does an okay job, but um, you really want to do to use a crow quill or something smaller. And I highly recommend if you haven't checked them out, you look into getting yourself some dinky dips. They're tiny little cups that are designed to hold your ink in place while you're dipping it in. It only holds a set amount of ink. And um, there's like a wooden block that you can set those little plastic cups in that will hold the whole thing steady and will improve the center of gravity. So they're very unlikely to spill. And they're convenient if you ink with a brush as well. Unlike the Seiji, the, um, the G-Nib is okay for fills. It's still not as good as a brush though. And filling in my spot black that way, it's gonna take forever to dry. And I need to show you guys how to do corrections. So, um, you're going to want a clean cup of water, and you're going to want white gouache, although you can also use, you know what, since it's something small, let's just go ahead and use a white Signo. This is a gel pen. It is a favorite for a lot of comic artists. And after your ink is totally dry, you should be able to cover it. So, 
so that was the G nib. I'm pretty sure specifically that is a Tachikawa G, G nib. So next we're going to move on to the spoon seiji included in our Art Snacks Inktober box. And you guys have seen me ink with it before. It has a much finer line. And for those of you with a light-handed shoujo style, this might be more what you're looking for. You do sort of have to, if you need thicker areas of black or thicker line weights, you do need to sort of build them up carefully. And because it has such a fine point but very little give, it can, it is kind of prone to tearing the paper if you try to layer with it. Now with everything I'm going to show you guys today, you do want to allow your inks to dry for 24 hours before you attempt erasing the line art underneath. And that allows the ink to cure. And that's particularly important with nib stuff, since it does leave more of a deposit. So I'm going to try my best to make sure I stay in the shot. Unfortunately, my current camera setup is pretty terrible for this. I've mentioned it many times and we haven't been able to find anything that's much better. So um, you'll just have to bear with me and I'll try to remember to include loads of photos. Anyway, if you have a lighter hand or you want a lighter effect, it seems like the Seiji's fine. Um, Again, my personal preference is still towards the G. I think um, it just handles better for the sort of inking I enjoy doing. I find the Seiji um, kind of scratchy to use. And that's true, honestly, of most spoon nibs. I'm just really not a fan of spoon nibs and their needle sharp points. I've noticed this also has a greater chance of like cutting the paper and you ending up with <laughs> it sort of reminds me of a marker because a piece of part of paper will get stuck in between the two tines of the nib and it'll um, put down a much wider line weight than normally the pen is capable of so it's sort of like a, a marker in terms of function but um, it doesn't really happen with the G nib it happens more with the spoon type seiji And the Seiji does seem to dry quicker than the G-Pin or the G-Nib, um, probably because it's putting down less ink. Um, and when I sort of look at it, at both pieces together, um, I sort of prefer, I'm more used to the line weight here with the Seiji. It's more comparable to what I was getting with a Sailor Mitsuo Ida. Whereas for me, with the style that I draw in, the G-nib is feeling a little bit clunky. That said, the G-nib was a lot more fun to ink with. And it would probably be fun to sketch with as well. So this is, this is definitely part of the reason why experimenting with a variety of pins and not just, you know, making marks on a page, although that is part of it. Um, but like sitting and inking something you're going to be drawing a lot of, getting used to it, um, can make a really big difference in how you feel 
about the nibs you're using. And they also take a little while to get used to. I mean, I've used nibs in the past, but it's been a couple of years since I've sat down and inked with a nib, so I was really out of practice. And now I'm a little bit more in practice. So that definitely helps. Of course, this whole edge of the page is gonna cause a little bit of consternation. Ideally, if you're doing this exercise, I recommend you do it um, on a large sheet of Bristol plate or smooth. So what I usually will do with that is I'll over ink which means I'll go over the area and sort of fill it in. And then later on, I will use white gouache or a white Signo or a Copic Opaque White to correct that area. And we had some minor problems getting the, uh, the Signo to work. So I think this time, once it dries, we're gonna go ahead and use the Signo, and, I mean the white gouache instead. All right, guys, I'm probably going to regret this because this water is not clean. Let's see how bad it is. Mm, moderately bad. So um, usually you'd want to do your corrections after you have erased everything. And I don't actually know if I'm going to bother erasing any of this stuff. All right, so this is not the usual way for applying white gouache, but it'll work. So pretty easy. You want to clean it out of your brush really well, especially if you applied it with one of the brushes you use for inking. It's kind of a no-no. And if it doesn't dry opaque enough, just go ahead and reapply it later. All right, so that is G-nib and Seiji, which is a spoon type. And some people do refer to the G-nib as a school type nib. That needs to dry, but next we're gonna be working on mapping and tank. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right, so I went ahead and I grabbed a mapping nib out of another set I have. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn the page and remove my G-nib from my Tachikawa holder. Will it fit? Just barely. Man, this holder will hold like anything. Will it come out? Probably not. Oh, this is my favorite nib holder. I got it stuck. Um, just by putting it in, actually. Whatever. I will go ahead and ink with it, and then we'll figure this out from there. So, I did a review the other day, which involved uh, this mapping nib, and I actually really liked how I handled, how it handled, um, because it's capable of the fine lines of a spoon or even a crow quill, but it has a lot of flex. And I don't know if it's because this one's kind of a cheap one and it's going to die on me. Also, not quite as prone. I d it did just scratch the paper there, but it's not quite as prone to tearing up the paper. And I feel like I can use a much lighter hand with it.
guys, now we have moved on to the tank nib, and I'm sorry, mine is so dirty. It has seen a lot of love and a lot of use. A tank nib basically is like a crow quill or a mapping nib, but it's got a little reservoir on the back to hold some of your, um, to hold your ink. So we're gonna go right back over to those dinky dips, and I might need to refill mine. It's looking like I do. And this nib might actually not work because as much as I love um, tank nibs, I have gone through many of them because they have a tendency to clog up and then never work again. So we'll try refilling our uh, dinky dip. testing it the other day it seemed to be working there we go fantastic and yet now it's not working and a tank when it's working properly is sort of the best of all worlds because you can get a fair amount of flex but it is capable of very fine lines Go ahead and zoom in there for you guys while I can. And I believe this is a Tachikawa tank, and I think I got it quite a few years ago from Jet Pins. You can also find a lot of these nibs on Amazon, and like I said earlier in the video, um, just check the annotations and my description for links to everything. I'll try to get you guys set up. I really wish one of these sites that um, sell these nibs would put together some uh, sample packs. I could do that pretty simply by, uh, oh, now the tank started acting up again. Come on, I know you're completely full. Um, by sort of disassembling some of the packs and putting them together. I know some of these sites will put together like starter packs for other types of of pin products like uh, brush pins and you can find some sets online as well some like pre-assembled multi nib sets and that's sort of the best way to figure out if something works for you Alright, I'm going to rinse my nib out and let this dry for a moment so I don't smear it. Alright, so now that that's dry, we can keep working. And if any little bitty hairs do get stuck in your nib, you want to make sure to remove it. Because those will kind of ruin your ability to draw teeny tiny fine lines as they'll drag the ink. For some reason I have a lot of them today seem to be quicker in and once your lines are dry you can go back over the area and thicken up your line work if you want to you just want to avoid doing that before it's dry because it'll tear up your paper So that, all right, let's let that dry before we finish this up and talk about the differences between a tank nib and a mapping nib. All right, guys, those lines are dry. We're almost done here with the tank nib. All right, so tank nib versus mapping nib. Um, they're about the same size. They're roughly the same shape as well, but the tank does have a little reservoir on the back, so it can hold more ink. 
Um, sometimes the tank can be a little tricky to get started. Um, so you do need to be patient with it, but I think it is an enjoyable nib to use. I really like the flex that tank nibs have. And I recommend that if you haven't given it a shot, you do so. I think you'll find it rewarding after you get used to using it. So next up after this dries is going to be a fixed width, fixed width nib and a crow quill. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right, guys, for the fixed width, we're going to use a B. And I was trying to decide between a B5 and a B5 and a half. Um, I think I'm going to go with the B5, though. Now, with a fixed width like this, you're not going to get any line weight variation. Um, so these are ideal for lettering, like lettering comics, but may not be ideal for drawing them. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, five might be kind of kind of too big. Let's try five and a half instead. And similar to the tank nibs, they do have a little bit of a reservoir on them um, to hold your ink. So you probably, yeah, it's a lot better. You'll probably be dipping less than you would with other types of nibs. And with these, it really doesn't matter how hard you press, you're still gonna get the same line weight and they do take some getting used to. If you decide you do want some line weight, you're gonna need to wait until it's completely dry. On the plus side though, it's far less likely to scratch your paper up. And for people who are just starting to use dip pens, these may be a good first choice. And just because they're fairly easy to use, fairly easy to maintain. They hold ink for a long time. Not prone to scratching your surface. For this sort of inking, it definitely helps if you have a steadier hand than I do. Because uh, you don't have line weight to help disguise your hand shaking and line weight in this instance is built up by uh, putting lines next to each other very similar to if you were using a technical pen another plus is the little reservoir on them does seem to hold ink for a fairly long period of time And without line weight to hide behind, my mistakes become very quickly apparent. Here on her cheek, there on the neck. That said, it handles very smoothly and I feel like I can ink very quickly with it. Although it may not be quite the best for the style that I choose to draw in. And this is a B nib. That's the one with the circle. And any pen that has a reservoir, you want to make sure you get the excess ink out. So lastly, we have Crow. And Crow is one of the most popular nib types in the U.S. And it's this little bugger right here. Now, we did not go through all of the nibs available. There are many, many types of nibs available. And if you're willing to branch out into calligraphy nibs or even glass pens that extend your options even further. I don't currently own a glass pen though. I would be happy to. I just don't have one. Knowing me and how clumsy I am, it would probably end up broken. but I'd love to try inking with one one day. Even if you're very familiar with inking and with nibs, these sort of exercises can be great because you may discover a new favorite or a new use for a pen you otherwise dismissed as not being right for you a while back. 
when I took advanced inking techniques, I don't think I really liked inking with a B nib, but I enjoyed it this time, warts and all. And honestly, I kind of remembered myself as hating nib inking in general, but now that I'm in the swing of it and almost done, I'm finding it pretty fun. Plus, now I have a handy reference of how my character, who's drawn in my normal style, looks in a variety of nib points. So if I do choose to go back to nibs, it'll help me decide which nib to grab. Crow is pretty fun. Um, it's pretty satisfying, pretty easy to do. Um, they're also inexpensive. This one was $2.25 a few years ago. I don't think they've gone up a whole lot. And they often come with their own holder. So as long as you've got that and the ink, you're pretty much ready to start inking. And pretty much all art supply stores sell crow quills. capable of a fair variety of line weight. They can be very delicate and thin or um, moderately thick and bouncy. And even someone who's heavy-handed like me can manage to have decent control over a crow quill, which is good for you beginners out there or those of us who may not have quite the fine motor skills we'd like to have. I am honestly pretty dang surprised that Art Snacks did not include um, some of the really ubiquitous nibs like Crow Quill and Mapping and um, the Fix Width. But I was also very surprised that I didn't get any calligraphy um, nibs in my Art Snacks lettering box. I had been warned in advance that it was a hand lettering box, but even when I took hand lettering at SCAD, we used nibs sometimes. Alright, so that's a fix width and that's a crow quill. I think I've covered a pretty fair gamut of different types of nibs today all demonstrated with my lovely character Kara from my comic 7-inch Kara. You can check that out. You can check out the first volume by clicking right there. Um, we're almost at the goal where backers have access to recent chapters that have not been published. So if you like what you see in volume one, it might be worth it to you to go ahead and become a backer so you can have early access to volume two. Um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. It helps me out a whole lot. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. If you have any concerns, again, leave it in the questions, comments below. If there's anything specific you'd like to see me do or try, especially in regards to inking, again, let me know. I'll try to accommodate you to the best of my ability. Um, if you enjoy this sort of content, please head on over to my blog, natosoup.blogspot.com. Um, while I was at SCAD taking, um, oh, see, I shouldn't have done that because it fell into the crow quill ink. And, um, yeah. And the paper is thin enough that it might soak through. Anyway, um, while I was at SCAT, I wrote a lot about my inking classes, so I have a lot of really good information on traditional inking over at natosoup.blogspot.com. So if that sounds like it's your kind of thing, please head on over and check it out. Um, and if you enjoy this video a whole lot, please take a moment to go ahead and share it with your friends and family via the social media links below. You'll be doing me a huge favor and you'll be helping me expand my audience, which I super appreciate. That sort of encouragement keeps me making these sort of videos. So 
If that's the sort of thing you enjoy, please do so. I'm Becca Hilburn. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today in my studio. I'll see you guys around. Bye!